January 6th was a violent and deadly attack against all Americans, against our democracy, our country, our elected leaders, our law enforcement, and our freedom as voters to choose the leaders that represent us, ensuring that we have a government of, by, and for the people. These attacks continue. One year later, the same faction that attacked our country on January 6th is hard at work silencing our voices by restricting our freedom to vote, attacking, attacking fair voting districts, and preparing future attempts to sabotage free and fair elections, and with it, our democracy. Mounting evidence shows that many elected leaders aided in planning January 6th. These same lawmakers are continuing to spread daily lies about the validity of the 2020 election to keep their supporters enraged and engaged. Here in our own New York 21, Elise Stefanik has continued to seek to divide and to gain notoriety by repeating this big lie, by endorsing, by endorsing the lawsuit to overturn the election, by voting against certifying election results, by endorsing baseless concerns about voting irregularities, by alluding to false claims about Dominion, by voting against the January 6th Commission, Stefanik continues to stoke the coals of violence and insurrection. Lives were lost and forever altered. Stefanik is culpable and must be held accountable, whether in the courts or in the voting booth. The January 6th attack by right-wing militants demonstrates the dangers facing our nation and only further underscores the urgency with which we need to transform our political system into one that works for each and every American. The U.S. Senate President Biden and our local legislators must fight to pass the Freedom to Vote Act, the Protecting Our Democracy Act, the John Lewis Voting Act, the DC Statehood Act, and other pro-democracy and voting rights legislation on both the federal and state level. The promise of democracy is not a partisan issue, but a calling that unites us all. So today, January 6th, exactly one year later, we the people, Americans across race, place, party, and background are here to say, in America, the voters decide the outcome of elections. Mark, can you hear me? Okay. Uh, my name is Larry, and I want to thank you for coming tonight. It's cold, but you're here. Uh, nothing is going to change unless you come. We're here today to remember, to recognize, and act on the horrific events that took place January 6, 2021. Okay. Hold it right up to your mouth, like an inch away. Okay. I'm getting there. Uh, you have your lights lit? Okay, hold them up, let's see. Beautiful. Okay. Um, in honor of Brian Sicknick, Howard Liebengood, Jeffrey Smith, Up to your mouth. Kyle DeFrete, Gunther, Hashida, and the others who sacrificed their lives to save our country. Let us now take a minute in silence to honor and pray for them. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, 
I'm gonna let it shine, this little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. One more time. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine. Let it shine. The horror of those who die cannot be imagined. The horror of those who lived through it and still live with it. We must empathize, sympathize, and somehow compensate. The government officials they knew it was coming. Stefanik, did she know? Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I think she knew. Many words have been used to describe what happened that day. Riot, insurrection, protest, disruption, a normal day. What it was? We were attacked. It was a terrorist attack on our country. Attempting to overthrow our government. Our government. It was a coup. They came with weapons and lots of people and arms. Because of this attack, was by our own citizens. It's called treason. 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 A consequence of treason is death. According to the Constitution, a consequence of treason is death. Or at least five years in prison. Not a slap on the wrist, not a walk in the park. All the people in that mob are traitors. All of them. They tried to overthrow our government, but are now treated like petty criminals. if they can be found. In the least, in the least they should have been thrown in jail immediately. Not wait until the morning and wait and see what happens. But they weren't. The police, the National Guard, they were there. They could have surrounded them. It could have happened, but it didn't. These people are dangerous. They are dangerous people. They hurt people. They killed people. They try to throw, overthrow our government. And they are still running around free. And they are still trying to overthrow our government. Had they succeeded, we might have been called the Democratic Republic of Trump. Whoa. Yesterday I read in Politico that 57 people in that mob are now running for political office. If they all start winning, they're going to take over the country legitimately. consequences should have been a punishment and not a wait and see. If they did overthrow the country, where would we be now? Your sons and daughters, your mothers and fathers, your friends and family, 
you, I think we'd be in deep crap right now. Remember this day and we must take action. Hey, Wayne. Like you have done today, other people concerned like us have to get off their asses. Otherwise, we're going to be in the same boat. Stefanik, is she a leader and insider of this big lie? Yeah. And how about of the coup? Was she part of this whole thing? And when the next election comes, what are we going to say about her? What is she going to be? And as the big dump would say, she's going to be a loser. Those involved in this attempted coup, the planning, provoking, communicating, coordinating, they should justifiably be punished. And quickly, not in 10 years from now, this country, in this country, you are not free to overthrow the United States of America. And they did it right in front of our eyes. And guess who else was watching when it all happened? The big dump. He was sitting there and watching it. I don't understand what the hell's going on in this country. This is crazy. These are dangerous people, traitors. They're running loose around the United States and continuing their acts of treason. What they did was probably practice for next time. To keep our democracy safe, our objective now seems to be don't have a violent attack on the Capitol. But in the meantime, the politicians are forgetting about people. Health care, voting, justice, civil rights, climate change, health care, and build back better. In addition, some states are looking to forego democracy and are preparing to overthrow elections legitimately and stop people from voting. Let's not forget the events of January 6th. We must change this country so it works for everybody. The lives that were sacrificed that day that we honor now should not have been made in vain. We must overcome. It's not easy coming out to demonstrate your feelings and spending your limited time, especially in the cold. But coming out today and again in the future will be the impetus for change. We thank you very much for coming. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm Matt Castelli, and I want to thank you to the uh, Saratoga Warren Washington Progressive Action Group for organizing tonight's event because I think it's incredibly important. Um, I want to thank you for inviting me here today to stand with you all as we remember the day our democracy fell under attack. 16 years ago, when I first joined the CIA, I took an oath. It's the same oath that each member of Congress takes. And those who serve within our military and defend the oath itself 
is to support and defend the Constitution against all enemies, foreign and domestic. That oath binds our allegiance to the United States, not to a political party, not to a president, but to the Constitution that establishes our government of, by, and for the people. Amen. Yeah. It's the same oath that Elise Stefanik took in 2015, and it's the same oath that she violated on January 6th one year ago. That day wasn't just a deadly attack at the Capitol. It was an attack on our democracy. Yes, it was. It was an attack on all of us. Yes, it was. And many are still healing from the trauma of January 6th. The police officers, the families who lost loved ones, those serving our democracy inside the Capitol, the members of the press who were on site that day. And my thoughts go out to each and every one of them. But we cannot move on from the horror of last year's insurrection without consequences for those that conspired to overthrow our government. We need to defend our democracy and protect against such events from ever happening again. And that's why earlier today, I called for legislation to bar from office anyone who engages in insurrection against our democracy after taking an oath to the Constitution. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty straightforward. Those who abandon their allegiance to the United States should be removed from and disqualified from office. Yes, and if we don't take this very basic step, then we risk continued insurrection from these very same officials when the will of the people doesn't go their way. Right. Yeah. Passing such legislation to protect against another January 6th will be my first priority in Congress. We must hold accountable those who inspired, planned, and participated in the Capitol insurrection. And that means demanding transparency from Elise Stefanik, yes. who violated her oath in that, in that particular day in her actions and has continued to do so every day since. Vote her out. Vote her out. Vote her out. Vote her out. Hours after the attack, she defied the Constitution and the will of the American people by refusing to certify the Electoral College count. Traitor! She promoted the big lie falsehoods that she was fed by the former president's inner circle to keep Donald Trump in power despite him losing a free and fair election. She's a liar! Since that day, she has tried to thwart attempts to investigate what happened on January 6th at every single turn. She voted against a bipartisan independent investigation of the attack. She led the effort to out Liz Cheney. And on the same day that police officers testified about the brutality that they endured on the 6th, she tried to distract from their very bravery by standing in front of the Capitol, attempting to draw media attention away from them. And just weeks ago, she refused to hold Trump's former advisor, Steve Bannon, and his chief of staff, Mark Meadows, accountable for violating their subpoenas. Vote her out! We now know there was coordination between the White House and members of Congress surrounding January 6th. And despite her efforts to deny Americans truth and transparency as to what happened that day, we deserve to know what Elise Stefanik knew and what role she played in the insurrection. And I have a direct message for Congresswoman Elise Stefanik. It's time you were forthcoming with all correspondence you had, your office had, with the Trump White House between November of 2020 and the January 6th Capitol insurrection. Yeah, yeah. It is time to release your emails, release your phone logs, release your text messages. It's time. If we can't trust her to be transparent about her actions on January 6th, what can we trust her with? Nothing. The only thing we can trust is that when given the choice, Elise Stefanik will always choose her own political self-interest 
at the expense of our country and our community. Her actions remind me of another individual with ties to the North Country. Someone whose success in the battles of the North Country inspired hope in the future of this military officer's role in the New Republic. Not unlike the hope we once had for Elise Stefanik. But those hopes were dashed when his lust for power and recognition led him to betray America. I am talking about the traitor Benedict Arnold and his treasonous spirit is alive and well in Congresswoman Elise Stefanik. In just mere days, Elise Stefanik is heading to Mar-a-Lago for a fundraiser with the very same people that organized and led the insurrection against our democracy. And even on this very somber day, she announced a raffle for this fundraiser. She hopes to flip the house in 2022 with millions of dollars raised. And if that happens, it may become impossible to protect the electoral process and the popular will of the American people in 2024 and beyond. It's gonna take all of us to prevent that from happening. Because one thing is clear, it's that January 6th was just practice. The fight for, the, for American democracy, it's upon us now. And this election is where we make our stand. We need to make sure that we don't allow officials who violate their oath to protect and defend this country an opportunity to continue to seek to destroy it from within. We need to protect from a January 6th from ever happening again. But we'll never do that if we don't hold those who aided and abetted an insurrection from serving in the very same institution that they sought to undermine. Amen. Right. Amen. The people of the North Country deserve someone who will stand up and put country before party, who will defend the will of the American people rather than bend to the will of a president. So let us make our intentions clear here tonight and protect our democracy by voting Elise Stefanik out of office next November. Yeah. How's everybody doing? Yeah. Are you warm? Yeah. Well, thank you very much for being here and thank you to the Saratoga Warren Washington Progressive for organizing this vigil for democracy. Before I talk about January 6th, I want to go back to a happier day, Election Day 2020. Yeah. On that day, I was volunteer poll watching in Detroit, Michigan. Around lunchtime, a woman showed up at my polling place who appeared either to be going to work or on break from work. She was wearing an apron, she had a Wendy's visor on, and she was having trouble finding her polling place. Ours was the second she visited, and unfortunately it wasn't the correct one either. She didn't have time to wait to help us figure out where she was supposed to go, but she said she would try again later. I didn't see her again, but I hope that she was able to cast her vote. She was trying so hard to show up for our country. A few months later, I watched, as you all did, as elected officials lied about the election lies that led to January 6th and a violent insurrection on our capital and an attack on our democracy. Lies. Five police officers died during the assault and its aftermath. Countless more are still suffering from the trauma that took place. Around 3 p.m. that day, my mother texted me, what can we do about our country? <laughs> What Elise Stefanik did was head to the House floor and vote against certifying the election. Shame. Against the backdrop of violence, she chose to double down on her loyalty to Donald Trump. And now, Elise and her GOP allies are trying to downplay and rewrite what actually happened a year ago. I grew up in this district, home of Fort Drum, 
the largest percentage of veterans in the state, and I know the true love of country that people here have. It is disrespectful to this deep patriotism that anyone would go along with a big lie, especially after this kind of attack, simply to gain personal political power. So the answer to my mother's question, what can we do? Well, first, my mother, who was a lifelong registered Republican, switched her party registration that day. Yes, yes. give it up for my mother. A small but important victory. But we also must do more. We must pass the Freedom to Vote Act and the John Lewis Voting Rights Advancement yes. Act. Yes. We have to stand up and point out every single time that craven politicians are willing to sell out our democracy for their own ambition. Yes. yes. And then we have to make the case to everyone throughout this district that all of this is much bigger than partisan loyalties because it's also about core kitchen table issues, like getting lead out of our pipes, fixing our roads and bridges, bringing high-speed internet to every corner of the North Country. Yes. 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 And at the end of the day, we here can agree that it is not acceptable for our current representative to have met what happened on January 6th with a cynical strategy to get more power for herself. Yes. So what can we do? Vote her out. Vote her out. Vote her out. We also pass legislation to protect our democracy and make sure that everyone can vote. Yes. We don't give up on talking to our neighbors and we hold any politician who went along with a big lie accountable and defeat them at the ballot box. Yes. I'm looking forward to working with you to do that. Thank you very much. Shortly after January 6th, I decided to run for mayor of Saratoga Springs. And you say, well, well, what does being mayor of Saratoga Springs have to do with treason and anarchy in our capital? And um, the reason I decided to run after January 6th, and it was such a motivating factor for me, was that it occurred to me that we really don't have a two-party system any longer. We only have really one side of, of the spectrum that believes in our democracy. The other side has forsaken democracy and essentially said that might rules. And so for me, I felt like it was very important that a Democrat a person from that other side serve as the next mayor of Saratoga Springs. Yes. And so I went out and started knocking on doors and got an organization. Pat, Pat helped me, several people out here helped me. And now I'm asking you to do that for this next election because so much more is at stake than just the mayor of Saratoga Springs. We need to make sure that we preserve democracy. Yes. And the only way we're gonna do it is to be out there, not only in the streets, but at the doors and talking to people. One of the things that my campaign immediately had to decide was are we gonna talk about January 6th? Should we? Will we lose more votes because people wanna forget about it? And we decided to talk about it. Yes. And sure enough, my opponent, who was running away from being a Republican, constantly said she was independent, was interviewed by WAMC, and they happened to ask her, hey, who do you think won the election? She refused to answer the oh question. She refused to answer the question. So I urge you first to work for candidates of your choice that believe in democracy. Yes. Right. Second thing is, Talk to your neighbors about this issue. Don't let them forget about January 6th. Don't let them forget about it. Because if we let them forget about it, we will lose next November. So I really implore you, work hard for the candidates. The two that, the, the two people, there's three people I know running against Stefanik. Choose one of them, work for them, knock on doors, 
do make those phone calls take the anger of january 6th and work hard for one of those candidates because so much is at stake so much thank you hey folks so did anybody hear joe biden speak this morning okay so one of the things that he said was that the former guy could have come right out there and stopped the attack on the Capitol. Yes, he could have he come should. there and stopped him. Well, guess who else could have come out and stopped him? Stephanie. At least Stephanie. These thugs who violently assaulted the Capitol police officers who tried to overthrow our republic, these are her base. You've seen the thugs when they were here in uh, Glens yes, Falls and they tried to intimidate us. Uh, and try to instigate violence. Yeah, These are her people. Yes, so, <laughs> just like Trump, she could have stopped it, and not doing so was a dereliction of duty. Is that yes, fine, yeah. maybe? It's so, a th offense. that's right. Yeah. So, yeah. folks, you've heard people <laughs> say it all here. Thank you. Keep doing it. Thank you. All right, guys, thanks for coming out. Let's finish with one song, Sing From the Bottom of Your Heart. All right. It's based on the boxer. You sing the one word, lie. It's called The Election Lie. I'll show you how. I go, The Election Lie. Lie, 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 Election lies! 